Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different and we're going to be taking a look at Unreal Engine 4. We're going to be using it along with CamTrack AR and some live action footage shot against green screen to create a 3D environment based on The Mandalorian. Season 2 is coming out very soon so we thought it'd be cool to create an alien planet. Now this is our very first Unreal Engine tutorial on the channel, we've never done it before. And I'm no expert at the software, I've only been using it for 6 or 7 months, but I have been able to create some really cool environments for the visual effects that we've made and posted on social and here on YouTube. YouTube as well. We've gotten a few comments from you guys asking how we created these sort of environments, so I'm going to be taking you through a sort of overview of the process. This is a very inexpensive workflow that gets you really high quality results. Now I'm not going to cover every single step because I can't condense everything that I've learned in the last few months into this one video, but for any steps that I do skip, I'll be sure to put a link down in the description whether it's a video tutorial or a website so that you guys don't miss any of the steps that I'm talking about. If you're interested in one of the specific aspects of the environment creation, you can either skip ahead using the YouTube chapters in the play button, or you can see the time codes on screen now. As always, if you have any questions at any point in the video, please do leave them down below. And again, I'm not an expert in the software. If you are and you see me making a mistake or seeing something that I could do easier, please do let us know and we'll be sure to include it in the next tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is actually shoot the scene that we're going to comp in later. This reduces the amount of work that you need to do because instead of building the entire 360 environment, you can just focus on a specific part where the camera is looking. All right. Technically, you don't need a green screen to do this. You could rotoscope your actors out every single frame, but that's a pain in the ass. I would highly recommend using a green screen. I wouldn't do it without it. It just makes the process a lot easier. We do have a tutorial on using CamTrack AR that goes into more depth, but the basic process is you film your scene and it captures the camera tracking data automatically. There's not a lot you have to do to get it to work. One thing that is important to do before you hit record is to walk around and capture the scene for the AR camera tracking data. This helps the camera orient itself in the world and gets familiar with the planes that already exist in your scene. We talk about this a bit more in the actual tutorial. Once the footage is shot, I can transfer it to my computer and now I can start building the environment inside of Unreal. The two things that you need to install for this are Unreal Engine 4 and Quixel Bridge, which is the asset library that has all of those really high detailed, high quality environmental assets like rocks, grass, surfaces, textures, all that kind of cool stuff. I'm going to skip over this step, but you can find guides for installing those in the description. If you have never used Unreal Engine before, I would highly recommend checking out the Unreal Online Learning Platform. This is an official learning site that Unreal, or Epic Games, which is the main company, has set up to help you learn the software. They have a bunch of different modules on a wide range of topics. If you're interested in VR production or learning more about real time, architect stuff, blueprints, all kinds of things. I would recommend the course that's called Your First Hour with Unreal Engine. This has you actually creating a map within an hour, taking you through all the basics in a really easy to understand way. So back to my environment, the first thing I'm going to do is create the ground layer. And to do that, I'm going to follow a tutorial because there are a lot of people who know more about this software than I do. Basically what you do is you create a giant landscape and then using a height map, which is a black and white image, you can add random hills and dips inside of the landscape without having to manually sculpt it. Unreal does have capabilities to actually sculpt the environment. You can add hills, you can add dips, flatten plateaus, whatever you want. It's a lot of fun, but for this case, I'm just gonna use a height map to make things easier and create the environment based on this image. Once I apply the height map to the landscape, you can see that it's way too massive for what I'm trying to go for. What I can do is come over to the details panel and set the Z scale to something much lower. This will shrink the landscape in one direction only. For the surface, I'm going to use a Mega Scans texture because they're really high quality and they look great pretty much just out of the box. So I'll open up Bridge and go into the surfaces and look for something that fits the scene I'm going for. Depending on what your scene calls for, you can download the texture in either 2K resolution, 4K, or even sometimes 8K. I find that most of the time 4K is what I need because my environments require that sort of close-up detail that 4K provides, and 2K sometimes looks a bit muddy. But if something is far away and you don't really need to see it up close, you can probably go with 2K and save on some space. Once the texture is downloaded, I can then send it directly to Unreal using the link built into the software, and it will show up in its own folder under the Megascans directory. I can drag and drop it onto the landscape surface, and it might be a bit big depending on the scale of your scene. In this case, I'll just open up the material and go into the tiling property. And that's pretty much it for the ground layer. Everything after this will be props and 3D assets that we add into the scene. I just needed something to establish the base to build off of. For the lighting in this scene, I kept it relatively simple. I have the directional light. It basically represents the sun and is a single point shining all across the landscape from a single direction. 
I also used a skylight, which captures the scene as it is and then shines it back onto itself to replicate the bounce lighting that tends to happen in environments like this. You have to be careful with this one because if you turn it up too much, your scene will have no depth, no shadows, and it will appear very flat. For the sky, I downloaded a picture that I liked from hdrihaven.com and brought that into Unreal. By default, inside of Unreal's engine content folder, there is an editor sky sphere, which is basically a sphere, and you can make it really big to encompass the entire map and then apply the HDRI to that. To do that, I'll link the tutorial that I used down in the description. It's the one that's called Sky Dome Material. The set decoration can be a lot of fun because it's pretty much just drag and drop and it's really easy to use and change assets depending on what look you're going for. Your virtual set, you can just change whatever you want. Yeah, no, right? Once again, I'll be using mega scans, but this time I'll go into the 3D assets category and search for things like Icelandic cliffs and rock assemblies that I can just jam together and they'll work because they all look kind of the same. One of the things to keep in mind to save on space is to only download the LOD that you're going to use. This stands for level of detail, and most assets from Quixel come with multiple levels of details. Basically, the farther away from the camera an asset gets, the less polygons it has in order to save on resources and keep frame rates quite smooth. This is more applicable in games where your character is moving around and can be far or close to an asset. In this case, we're going to be staying in a specific spot, so I'll just select level of detail 0, which is the highest. Once I find and download an asset that I like, I can select Export to Unreal Engine, and similar to the materials, it will automatically appear inside of my Megascans folder. And from here, it's pretty much drag and drop, so I can place them into the scene, I can change the position, rotation, I can make it massive or really, really small. And in the case of the rocks, most of the time I find that I can even mix them together and overlap them. And because they're of the same look and texture, they tend to work well together. If you need to change an asset to fit better with your scene, you can do that by going into the material. This is in the details panel, double click to open it up. One of the things you might need to change is the albedo tint or intensity, and this is tinting the asset a specific color to help it blend better with maybe your surface or your ground that you have. You can also change the roughness, which is how wet the mesh looks. So if your scene is rainy, you might need to lower this to get a shinier looking asset. I would definitely check out the official Quixel channel. They have a bunch of tutorials creating multiple different kinds of environments using high quality assets and really making them look incredibly realistic. A lot of the tutorials are either a multi-part series or they have a short version and then a longer live stream version where they go into more detail. I find that when building an environment, it really helps to have reference photos of the look that I'm going for. So in this case, it was based on The Mandalorian. And so I was referencing images from the actual show to build this environment and get that sort of rocky look. From here, it's just downloading multiple different kinds of assets and placing them in my scene to get variety, detail and texture and to make it look a bit more interesting. One of the things that can make a big difference in your environment is exponential height fog. You can drag that into your scene and it should have an immediate effect. You can change the color, the density, the distance that it takes to have an effect on the scene, and it can really give some atmosphere into your scene if it's looking a bit flat. The post-process volume is what happens at the end of the render and is the final color correction, any sort of color grade that you might apply, changing the way the bloom looks, which is the glow, adding a vignette, adding grain, chromatic aberration, this can make a huge difference in the way your environment looks, but in this case, I'm actually going to keep it to a minimum because I know that I'm going to bring this environment into HitFilm for the composite, and I don't want to have to match all this stuff on my plate if I can just do it inside of HitFilm. So in this case, I'm going to keep the post-process very small, only making tweaks for things that I can't change after it's rendered. Once we have our environment built, we can now bring our camera tracking data into the scene so that we can see how the camera will be moving in the context of the shot. To import our camera tracking data into Unreal, we're going to need Blender, which is free. The reason we need to use Blender is because we need to export the camera tracking data as an FBX file, which is what Unreal uses for the camera. We're looking at improving this process so you don't have to go through Blender to export as an FBX, but for now this is the way it is. It's relatively simple, so let's just go ahead and take a look. When you record your tracking data, CamTrack will create a .hfcs file, which is a hit film composite shot. When you open up Blender, first delete the default camera in Cube, and then go to File, Import, Hit Film AR Camera Tracking Data. If you don't already see this, you'll need to install the Blender Python plugin that comes with CamTrack. This is covered in our other tutorial as well, but it's a straightforward process. Once the camera tracking data has been imported, you can see that it is moving along with the scene. I have the camera here and it's moving as I did in the real world. Next, go to File, Export, FBX, and save the file on your computer. Inside of Unreal, go to Cinematics and add a level sequence. This will create a timeline in what's called Sequencer, which is basically Unreal's editing timeline. Create a new camera by clicking this button here, and then right-click to import an FBX. 
select the file you just saved out of Blender, and uncheck Reduce Keys. If it didn't do it by default, set the FPS to 60. This is the frames per second. You should now hopefully see that your Unreal camera is moving as it did in the real world. Now it's time to export our environment from Unreal Engine and bring it into HitFilm. To do that, I'm going to come over to this button, which is Render as Movie. I'm going to leave it as an AVI, and I would recommend exporting as 4K, even if your final composite is only 1080p. This is because all that extra detail will keep the render sharp and prevent it from looking a bit muddy. One thing to note is that CamTrack AR records your video at 1920 by 1440 which isn't standard 1080p. We give you that footage just in case you need it, but you can always just crop it down to 1080 and it won't have any bad effect on it. So I'll increase the height of the render so that it matches CamTrack, and then select Capture Movie. At this point we're going to move into HitFilm and bring in our footage and our exported background. We don't have to do any camera tracking because the exported background will have all of that data. The only three things we really need to do are key out the background, mask out any unwanted items in the shot, and then color match the two plates. We do have a previous tutorial on green screening inside of HitFilm. Which effect you use depends on whether you're using Express or Pro. In this case I'm going to use Pro and use the chroma key effect. Then I'll mask out any unwanted items inside of my scene. Again, we do have a previous tutorial on this from Axel. You can find that in the description as well. I knew that I was going to export the final piece as a 2.4 aspect ratio, so much thinner vertically than it was shot. This helped save some time because I didn't have to mask out things that were outside of those boundaries. For color matching and color grading, I'm going to use mostly just curves and the hue, saturation, and lightness effect to tweak the contrast and brightness of each clip individually to help match them up. Finally, I'll stylize it by using the Bleach Bypass effect, a little bit of chromatic aberration, a vignette, and some final color grading tweaks to bring it all together. And that is an overview of how to use Unreal Engine 4 to create a fully 3D environment to use inside of your HitFilm creations. If you like this video, please do let us know, and if you have any questions about a specific section that we covered, if you want to see something in more detail, do let us know in the comments because, again, this is the first time that we've done a tutorial like this, and we want to learn and improve and cover what you guys are interested in. Be sure to subscribe for more filmmaking and visual effects tutorials, and we'll be posting the stuff that we're working on on our Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, so be sure to follow us there as well. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.